Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher On in Guzman, and our topic for today is illustrating mutually exclusive events for grade 10 quarter. So when there are two or more events, it is important to understand how they are related before finding the probability of one or the other event occurring. So mutually exclusive events are events that cannot occur at the same time. Two events are said to be mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes in common. The set are disjoint events or they do not intersect. The probability that either event A or B occurs is the sum of their probabilities. Let's look on our diagram or Venn diagram. So clearly we have sets A and B and there's no common intersection or there's no intersection between the sets A and B. Okay, so the probability of A or B, okay, in symbol, we have here the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B, wherein the intersection is a null set. Let's have example number one. Suppose you draw a card from a standard deck of 52 cards. What is the probability of drawing an ace or a king? So, for our simplicity, okay, we will have here the probability of ace, okay, in symbol, the probability of A. There are four aces in out of 52, okay, that is in the standard deck. Also, the probability of king, so that is P, P or probability of B is equal to 4 of over 52 because there are four kings in the standard deck of 52. So take note that the probability of both events is equal to null set because since a card cannot be an ace or a king at the same time, so the events are mutually exclusive, so that is the two events cannot happen at the same time. So solving it further, so the probability of drawing a king or a queen is equal to the probability of drawing a king plus the probability of drawing a queen. Again, we simply substitute the value of the probability of A plus the probability of B. So that is 4 over 52 plus 4 over 52. So this is equal to 8 over 52. Or in lowest terms, this is equal to 2 over 13. So therefore, the probability of drawing a king or a queen is 2 over 13. For the meantime, we will express our probability into fraction. Sometimes it can be expressed as decimal or in percent. Again, to summarize our concept of probability of mutually exclusive events. So if two events A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability that either event A or B occurs is the sum of their probabilities in symbol. So that is P or probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B or the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus probability of B which means that their intersection or the probability of their intersection is equal to zero. Okay, to help us better understanding on the mutually exclusive events, so let's have this example. So the event of getting a number divisible by 2 or the number divisible by 5 from the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is an example of not a mutually exclusive events. Because if we will look into this one, since the subset of a number divisible by 2, which is 10, is also subset of a number divisible by 5. Two events A and B are said to be not mutually exclusive if they can occur at the same time. So let's look on our Venn diagram. Clearly, okay, this is the set of the multiples of 2. On the other hand, this blue, okay, circle is the multiple or set of multiples of 5, okay, up to 10. So clearly, there is a common element between, okay, uh, multiple of 2 and 5, which is 10. And aside from that, 
Okay, the numbers 1, 3, 7, and 9 are outside. Okay, okay, the multiples of 2 and 5 because they do not belong to either, okay, uh, the uh, multiple of 2 or multiple of 5. Moving on. So, if you want to find out the probability of A or B, so that is probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Clearly, so we have here in symbol the probability of 2 or 5. So, if we can look in our figure or band diagram, there are 5 elements out of 10. So, that is 5 over 10. Next, the probability of B. So, there are... Uh, two elements in B. So we have here, okay, 5 and 10. So that's why 2 over 10. Next, so the probability of A and B. So this is the probability, okay, of their intersection. So there is common element out of 10. So that is why 1 over 10. Solving it further, so that is actually 6 over 10. Okay, in fraction or in decimal, this is equal to 0 0.60 or 0 0.6 or this is equal to 60%. Alright, so let's move on to problem number two. Francis has three white balls, four green balls, and five red balls in his box. He takes a ball from his box at random. What is the probability that it is a white ball or green ball? Again, so the probability of white, so that is in symbol P of A is equal to 3 out of 12. So there are 3 white, ball, white balls out of 12. Why 12? Because 3 plus 4 plus 5 is equal to 12 in all. So the probability of green, so that is P of B so is equal to 4 over 12. So take note that the probability of both events is equal to 0. Okay, since a ball cannot be a white or green ball at the same time, so the events are mutually, okay, exclusive. So again, so probability of drawing a white or green ball, so this is equal to the probability of drawing a white ball plus probability of drawing a green ball. So we have here 3 over 12 plus 4 over 12, so this is equal to 7 over 12. So therefore, we can say that the probability of drawing Okay, a white or green ball is equal to 7 over 12. Let's move on to problem number 3. So one guy is toss. What is the probability that it shows a 2 or a 6? So if you toss a die, the number that will come up will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. There are 6 possible outcomes in all. Therefore, the probability that it will show a 2 is 1 out of 6 so, with 6 in symbol, so that is the probability of 2 or 6 is equal to 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6, okay, or that is 2 over 6 or equal to 1 third. So, this is the same as 0 0.333 or this is equal to 33.33%. So, if we will put this one in diagram, so this is actually the 2, this is 6. Clearly, there is no common okay, shaded part between 2 and 6. And take note that 1, 4, 5, and 3 are outside the circles 2 and 6. So therefore, we can say that these events are mutually exclusive since they do not have outcomes in common. Let's consider this next problem. So, women's footwear store owners buy from three companies A, B, and C. The most recent purchases are shown below. If one is selected at random, what is the probability that it was purchased from the company B or C? So let's look at the data. So we have here companies A, A B, and C. So we have the product, doll shoes, rubber shoes. Okay. So for company A, we have 77 and 20. So the total is 97 in all. On the other hand, for company B, we have here 24 plus 46. So the sum is 70. While well, company C, we have 24 plus 59 plus, okay, this is equal to 83. And the other hand, so the total, if we will get the total for A, B, C, for the doll shoes, we have 125. For the rubber shoes, for, okay, companies A, B, and C, so this is equal to 125. Overall, there are 250, okay, being purchased in all. 
So events B and C are mutually exclusive since they have no outcomes in common. Solving it further, so if you want to find out the probability of B or C, so that is the total out of 250. So that is the total for B. So take note, so the total is 70 out of the total of 250. Likewise, for the probability for C, so that is actually 83 over 250. So this is equal to 153 over 250. So this is equal to 0 0.612 or 61.20%. So therefore, we can say that the probability is 61.20%. On the next item, number 5, we will use the concept of probability. So let's consider this example. There are 5 men and 6 ladies on the executive staff. A committee of 5 people is being selected at random to lead the transition committee. What is the probability that the committee will have at least 3 men? So take note that at least 3 men means that the committee may have 3, 4, or 5 men. It is not possible to select a group of 3 men, a group of Four men in a group of five men all in the same five-member committee at once. So, if we will have here the probability of at least three men, so meaning to say we will have the probability of three men plus probability of three men plus probability of five men. Now, so let's clarify this. If we say three men, okay, so in a group of five, so we have three men and two ladies. Okay, so the sum is actually five. At the same time also, if you say the probability of four men, meaning to say there are five members in a committee of five, so four and men and one lady. Also, if we have here the probability of five men, it means that we have five men but no lady at all. So, if we will get the probability of at least three men, meaning to say the probability of three men, so meaning to say that is okay probability or the combination of okay three men taking okay uh five men taken three at a time times six women taken two at a time divided by eleven taken five at a time plus the probability of four men so that is four men okay so the combination of five taken four at a time times for the ladies we have okay six women taken one at a time divided by okay so 11 okay members taken five at a time finally we have five men taken five men at a time times okay out of six we will have zero lady at a time divided by 11 members of the committee taken five at a time so, we will have here 150 over 462 plus 30 over 462 plus 1 over 462. So, this is in lowest term. So, this is equal to 181 all over 462 or this is equal to 39.18%. So, therefore, we can say that the probability is 39.18%. So that ends our discussion on illustrating mutually exclusive events. Again, this is Teacher Onendi Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.